Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> that one person out there. <laughs> Uh, my name is Ruben Page. I'm the transfer coordinator here at Long Beach City College and also one of the counselors. And I'm going to be moderating today's panel. So today you get to hear from uh, the real professionals in terms of transfer. And it's not me, and it's not the university reps or visiting uh, campuses. It's actually the folks who uh, came before you and were successful in getting to the university. So they will be sharing with you their experiences before transfer and after transfer. And uh, I'm also going to open it up to questions here and there from the audience. Uh, if you think of something that I'm not covering, uh, I'll give you also a little bit of time to ask your questions. There is a microphone for those who are not shy uh, up there to my left. Uh, if you want to stand up later on when I give you the cue, if you want to ask the panel your questions. And it's mostly you're getting up at the microphone so your classmates can hear the questions also. Okay? So we're going to get right at it. And, okay, everyone looks nervous on the panel. <laughs> Don't worry, the hard part is done. You've already transferred. Uh, first, I want, um, starting from my left, uh, right here at the my end of the table. If you could just introduce yourself, your major, the university you're currently at, and what other schools accepted you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Marco Mendoza. I am a sociology major who just transferred to UCLA. Um, as far as what other schools accepted me, um, UC Riverside and, and Cal State Long Beach were the other two that accepted me. So for me, the, the choice was, was clear. It, it was my dream school, so I'm very happy to be here. There's some Bruin fans out there. <laughs> Hello, my name is uh, Nestor Torres. Major was family and life education with a minor in communications. I attended Cal State Long Beach, and I applied uh, Cal State Long Beach, Dominguez Hills, but I was 100% uh, sure that I, I wanted to go to Cal State Long Beach, so that was it. Um, my name is Moni, and uh, the university I'm attending is UCI. Um, the, my major is biological science, and the university that I got accepted in was um, UC San Diego, UCLA, UCR, and U UC Riverside, um, and Cal State Long Beach. So. Thank you. Hi everyone, um, my name is Kate and I currently go to Cal State LA and I'm a business major and I got accepted to Cal State Long Beach, Cal State Fullerton and Cal State Dominguez Hills. Hi everyone, my name is Alex Escobar. I attended Loyola Marymount University but I applied to USC and Loyola but I picked Loyola Marymount University because it was more service oriented. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alejandra Tapia. I graduated from Cal State Long Beach uh, last year. Um, I got accepted to Cal State Long Beach and Cal State Dominguez Hills, but my choice was Cal State Long Beach. And my major, I majored in Child Development and Family Studies as well as Child Family Life Education. Fantastic, thank you. And as you can see by uh, today's panel, we've got a uh, nice selection of, um, we've got someone from private schools, UCs, CSUs, all represented up here. Uh, so uh, just so our panel can know who they're talking to, this is for the audience. Uh, can you uh, raise your hands if you are thinking of transferring to a Cal State? All right. And thank you. Uh, my UC transfers. All right. Private schools. Uh, anyone going out of state? Anyone covering multiple universities, systems? Okay. Uh, my first, the first lesson from that first answer was keep your options open. As you heard from our panelists, they were accepted to several different universities, had several contingency plans. Uh, they weren't relying on just one university. 
and they took the best offer. How many of you, um, this is for the audience also, uh, work part-time? How about my full, anyone working full-time? That's a lot too. Any veterans in here? Awesome. And uh, let's see, any parents? Great. And has anyone or is anyone going to apply for fall of 2015 transfer? All right. So you'll be contacted for next year's panel when you get accepted, just to let you know. <laughs> uh, the next question that I have is for my panelists. Uh, think about your first day of classes at the university, and please describe that first day in your classes on your campus. And we'll start from the far end. My first day, um, I remember the campus seemed pretty big, <laughs> really big actually, Cal State Long Beach. Um, I was able to find my way around though because of the, the SOAR um, uh, orientation that they had. So it, w it really helped a lot. Um, um, mm -hmm. I felt a little overwhelmed because it was the first day again and uh, transferring from Long Beach City College though helped a lot because it's kind of like a, a smooth transition going from high school to a city college to a university as opposed to going from a high school to a university. It's a big uh, change, I think. Um, so that definitely helped a lot for me. Thank you. So, um, I went to a private school, so I was really excited about like small class sizes for myself. Um, I also had done, I got into a program that was specifically for Latino students at my small university, Loyola Marymount, and I felt very prepared because this orientation program had really set me up to like feel more comfortable. Um, I was slightly intimidated because I just thought maybe like everyone's way smarter than me and like maybe I'm not supposed to be here, but um, once I was there, like, like Alejandra just said, um, when you're in community college, you know what to expect from college. So by the time I got to my four-year university, I kind of like had college under control. Like, yes, this is a community college, but it doesn't mean that you like can't handle the workload when you get there. Like you should feel mostly prepared. So I was, I was okay. Thank you. Hi, so my first day was actually pretty good. Like I was actually really excited and I was already familiar with the campus because since um, we're in a quarter system at Cal State LA. I didn't start till September 25, and I know I think Long Beach started in August, so I had that whole month of doing nothing. So unlike Fridays, because I do work Monday to Thursday that summer, I would just go to Cal State LA and get familiar with the campus. I I looked for my classes. I looked for where the financial office is, the financial aid office, the admissions office. So I was familiar with the place. So on my first day, I knew where to park. I knew where to go, and I knew where to hang out, like where the computer labs are at and stuff like that. So I was prepared, and it went great because it was um, my management class. I, my teacher is actually the author of our textbook, so that was actually pretty excited for me because I have never had a professor that uses a textbook that he wrote. So yeah, it went great. So yeah, if um, for your first day to go as great as mine, I believe you should um, go and get familiar with the place because you don't want to be one of the students that don't know where to go, and that just caused like that chaotic first day. Thank you. So um, for me, it's going to be the same for the other three panelists. Um, first day of class was like, oh, OK, this is like 500 students in this one lecture hall. And then the instructor is in the front speaking and like just microphone projecting and all of that. And um, the good thing, though, about UCI, they have something called week zero. So the first uh, two or three days, they let you familiar with the um, campus and the classes and the parking and everything that you wanted to know. So I just go to, um, to the campus during week zero and get myself familiar with the campus and whatever I want to know, the bookstores and all of that. Um, go to check out my classes. And I was very excited. And there was a lot of instructors speaking with British accents. So I was excited for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
For my first day of class, um, I think it was a bit overwhelming. Um, I was a transfer stu student, so I expected to have uh, an advantage choosing my classes, but it was kind of like you get the last pick since you're trans I transfer on the spring day, so I think it was on a Monday. I had four classes and one on Wednesday, so I had a really messy schedule, overwhelming, you could say. So on Monday, my class started at 12, and I went to class like at 7 in the morning, that <laughs> early, because they, some of my friends uh, told me to go early because of the parking, but I went like four hours be uh, earlier, and uh, <laughs> I think I kind of exaggerated, but at least I got, I, I got parking close enough to my, uh, my classroom. So um, other than the schedule, I think it was, uh, it was, a, it was a good day. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it won't take me too long to recall because my first day of class was about two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like, like some of my peers here, I, I did a walkthrough to my classes. So I, I want to know exactly uh, what staircase to go up, what, uh, I guess, walkway or pathway to, to go down. And I recommend that um, on my first day, I, I, it's actually my busiest day of the week on Thursdays. And um, my I think one of the biggest things I, I recall and I still do is that I, I have classes with in, in really large auditoriums with 150 people and, and I didn't have that, any of that here. And so that was, that was the biggest, I guess, thing to get used to is that you're sitting in large auditoriums and, and not a 30-person intimate class. Also, I mean, just like I said, walking through the classes was, was great. and. I, one of the biggest things I still remember, and I, I think I told like two people so far, so you guys will get a, a sneak peek into my mind, but, <laughs> but I, I felt really emotional my first day. Um, if you've ever been to UCLA, um, one of the most iconic buildings that you can, you can ever recall is, is Royce Hall. It's, it kind of looks like a church, it's got two towers on it, and you can see it anywhere on any UCLA posting probably. And I remember walking down the arches um, of, of that building and, and just, Getting very emotional and just saying, "Wow, thank you, thank you, um, thank you for for this. Thank you for letting me be here." And it, it, it was it was an amazing experience just that first day, and I and I will never forget it, and I still don't. So that was my first day. Fantastic, thank you, panelists. <clears throat> A couple of takeaways from the the answers uh, that our panelists gave was first, um, almost all of them mentioned an orientation. Some of the orientations are uh, mandatory, some are not. I highly suggest that you attend the orientation. Usually your advisors are there to talk to you. Uh, they're talking about everything from parking to uh, course selection. So definitely try to attend your orientations. Also pay attention to the type of environment you want to transfer to. Some of uh, your classmates up here uh, mentioned large environments, large lecture halls. Uh, some mentioned a more intimate uh, experience with smaller classrooms. Uh, start thinking about that now before you transfer to uh, your new university homes. Also something that our panelists mentioned was a uh, quarter system versus semester system. Um, and a quarter system is typically about 10 weeks. So in your first lecture typically, you're already talking about the 500 pages that you have to read before the following week or the midterm that's gonna be in three weeks uh, versus what you're sort of used to here, which is a full semester, typically 18 weeks. And some students uh, may prosper more in one type of uh, system or calendar rather than the other. So be aware of that in terms of uh, your transfer plans. And the final thing is uh, all of them became familiar with their uh, classroom uh, or their university environments before they got there. And uh, that, that kind of shows their uh, preparation, not only for the university, but also why, well, the, why they're up here right now, that they were prepared and able to transfer. So thank you, panelists. The next question, starting from my end, is think back to your experiences at Long Beach City College, for some of you that was not too far back. And can you tell the audience what you thought your biggest challenges were for transfer and how you overcame them, starting on my end here. Well, I think in my case, the biggest challenge was that being a first generation college student, I had no one at home that I could really ask questions to or, or, or just pick their brains on, on what college was like. 
So for me, um, the biggest challenge was finding a community that would help me answer those questions and that would really guide me to, to where I wanted to be. Uh, and when I first got here, I, I can honestly say that I'd, UCLA wasn't on my horizon. I, I wanted to transfer, but I didn't know where. And, but it was, for me, um, things like Puente and, and being involved in student life. Uh, I was an ASB. I eventually climbed the ladder enough to, to become president. And, and I think being involved in student life and, and Puente and just finding a community for myself was, which was huge. And that was, was, I think, what helped me overcome the, the obstacle of not knowing uh, what to do and, and, and having answers for my questions. Thank you. I think I can highly relate to uh, Marco's. Uh, Marco, um, I transferred in fall 2011 and I transferred the same uh, semester with my sister, so I had no one uh, to rely on for advice. Well, actually I did. It was my peer Alejandra on the, on the left side. But besides her, I think I didn't have anyone in my family. I'm the first generation to go to college with my sister. So any, any question that I had, I mean, I couldn't ask her because she was as confused as I was. But one tip I will uh, give you guys is any paperwork that you have to give, go in person. Um, I, my transcripts were lost, I think, three times. There was miscommunication. Uh, so I did spend money uh, several times because there was some miscommunications with uh, Long Beach City College and Council Long Beach, so I had to go in person, and that, that was the best thing I could do. Um, and because of that, my application was denied, but I, I mean, I could appeal it through a, uh, a counselor. I was very involved at Long Beach City College. I, I was, got involved in, with the Puente program, and um, because of that, uh, my counselor, Rosa Carrillo, at the time, she was able to advocate for me at Council Long Beach, and I uh, my application was uh, reopened and I got accepted. Uh, so that's the one tip I, I want you guys to uh, remember. Uh, if you can, possibly, turn in any paperwork by, uh, in person. Um, so that's, I guess that's the highest challenge I had, just the paperwork and communication and, and staying on top, you know, in the calendar, mark, mark the dates, because if you miss the due date, uh, that's it, you know. They'll drop your application and you got thousands of students trying to get in and take your position, so. Uh, stay on top of your application. Thank you. Um, for me, my experience at Long Beach uh, City College is um, all about growing. Um, I grow a lot when I come to Long Beach City College. I also build a lot of relationship with my peers, um, my coworkers. I'm also a tutor at the Turing Center um, and my, um, the instructors. So I wanted to build a really strong relationship because I know that one day I would have to come back and ask them for the letters of rec. And I think my A standing in my transcript alone doesn't say anything, but, uh, but um, communicating to the instructors really is going to distinguish me um, from other students. Um, and that end up helps me a lot. Um, also, I try to volunteer um, through Long Beach City College and also outside um, of the Long Beach City College within the Long Beach community. Um, and that also helps me with the application process of speaking about my, my extracurriculum activities. Um, and that is it that I have for you. Thank you. Okay, so I didn't really have any major challenges here at Long Beach City College because my transfer was pretty smooth because um, the transfer center is really helpful. They actually um, sat down with me while I'm doing the application in CS, um, CSU Mentor, I believe. And my counselor is awesome. You just go in there, make an appointment. They will do an ed plan with you, depending on what you want to do. So I knew the classes I wanted to take and what I needed to take and how I want to schedule it for the different semesters going towards graduation and transferring. So as for the challenge, though, one of the main challenges I had was picking which school I want to transfer to. I, do, I did know that I wanted to transfer to Cal State, but I didn't know if I wanted to um, transfer to Long Beach or Dominguez, Fullerton, or LA. I came in here in 2011 at Long Beach City College, and I have set my mind into going to Cal State Fullerton, but right now I'm enrolled in Cal State LA. So I guess 
you just need to know what you want to get from the school you're transferring into. Like, it would have been t too convenient for me to go to Casa Long Beach because I live in Long Beach. And I believe Long Beach City College and Casa Long Beach has a partnership. But I wanted to grow more and I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. So I chose Cal State LA and also the quarter system. I really like that a lot because I feel like I'm going to be finishing more classes in a shorter amount of time as opposed to a semester. So that's my um, advice for like picking your school and for the transferring process, just visit the counseling office, visit the admissions office for your transcript, visit the transfer center there. Like the resources are there, you just need to go over there. Thank you. Okay, so I don't want to sound like a broken record, but for me, my big challenge was also being a first generation college student. There weren't very many people I could ask questions to, but um, I did have a few friends from high school that had come here and were kind of on their path, and I really picked their brains to figure out like what worked and what didn't work. Um, I also was a part of Alpha Gamma Sigma Honor Society, and being surrounded by students who also wanted to transfer like me and who had um, many of the same um, values that I did in terms of like education um, helped me to be surrounded by people like that. Um, I was also in the honors program, so I really liked the small class size, which is why I really wanted to transfer to a private university. And I think a lot of community college students sometimes feel that, oh my gosh, private school, it costs way too much money, I never want to go there. That's like not even an option for me. What I will tell you is that if you are in financial need of money to go to college, private schools sometimes have more money to give to you than state schools. Um, so don't like completely eliminate that as an option for yourself. Um, I knew I wanted to go to a private school and so that is like where I applied and what was important to me and I wanted a small class size. And I also just encourage all of you to visit as many college campuses as you can while you're in um, community college because then you can really get a feel for like what fits for you. You've heard so many things about there's quarter systems, there's semester systems, there's this, there's that, and it can feel very overwhelming. Um, so definitely just visit college campuses, be an advocate for yourself, ask a lot of questions, um, and you'll do fine. Oh, and also um, meeting with a counselor on a regular basis just to make sure I was on track was extremely helpful because you don't want to just, um, you don't want to put your eggs all in one basket and you also don't want to be taking the wrong classes that won't eventually transfer to where you would like to go. Thank you. Also, like uh, like Alex mentioned, I was also a first generation student. Um, the biggest challenge for me was just figuring out uh, things. Um, I did have a lot of help though because I, when I started college, I pretty much took all the same classes, the majority of the classes, with my best friend. So we helped each other out in that sense. So that helped a lot. Um, as far as uh, wait lists, that was another thing that was a bit challenging in getting in the, the classes that you needed and at the, the moment that you needed them. Um, so when it comes to that, what I found out was just emailing the instructors helped, kind of um, getting to know your instructors helps you um, not only um, better in the class, but also just knowing more people. It expands your, your network. Um, while I was here, um, starting my first semester here, I joined a social service club called Ladies of Athena. You might be familiar with it. It helped a lot also get a lot of community service hours in, a lot of good things that helped, that looked good on the, on the resume and the application and everything. So I was able to apply all of that into my application for Cal State Long Beach. And to this day, I look back and it was one of the best um, decisions I made. Fantastic. Thank you, panelists. Uh, a couple of things from the answers that um, I picked up on. How many of you uh, in the audience are first generation college uh, university transfers? So a majority of the folks out there are first generation. I am a first generation uh, transfer also, so I did not really have anyone, uh, an older brother or sister, to ask what classes I should take. Uh, so when I first got to university, I uh, basically followed my roommate's lead. Unfortunately, he was an English major and I was computer science, so I took a lot of literature courses for some reason that I didn't need to take. <laughs> so let that be a lesson to you. Uh, also, uh, another theme was choice. Uh, someone mentioned it up there. Uh, a big challenge for you comes in the spring when you get accepted to multiple universities. 
And it may be hard right now, oh, I'm, I'm applying, I don't know what the online application looks like. In the spring, it becomes a different decision on where you want to go to. So start thinking about your choices. Another thing that was stressed was following up on your paperwork. And also a quick tip, make sure for your emails that you're checking your emails, uh, especially uh, if you have spam folders and uh, strong filters for your emails. And finally, someone mentioned, uh, or a few of our panelists mentioned visits to universities. How many of our panelists visited their university for a tour? Can I see it? Okay. Did any of you go with me on a tour? Okay. okay. Some of you, did you get to the bus, back to the bus on time? Okay. All right. <laughs> um, now I want to make sure I don't hog up all the questions. Um, is there a question from the audience that uh, you would like to pose to our panelists? Uh, at this moment. Anyone want to ask them a question? Anybody? Okay, can you run up to the, you're gonna have to not be shy and let your classmates hear you. <laughs> and is this for all the panelists? Hi, I'm okay. Martha Lynn and um, I'm first generation graduate here in the United States and um, I want to transfer to a university, which is Cal State. And my biggest, uh, I guess, not a problem yet, but it, I'm thinking it will be a problem, is really deciding. How do you decide the universities? I know you said, um, you said service, and uh, how do you really like, put it all together to make that choice? Excellent question. So at the far end, how did you make that final choice? Well, for me, it was, uh, I, Cal State Long Beach was just my first choice um, when I applied. I also applied to Cal State Dominguez just in case I wasn't going to be able to get into Cal State Long Beach. Um, for me, it was more of the, um, the um, it was closer to home. And I kind of just wanted to stay in the area. It's what I knew as a start transferring from here. I grew up in Long Beach, so that's why I wanted to, for me, that was, that was why. Thank you. So, um, like I've said a few times, it was really important for me to go to a small university. Like, I just knew that I thrived in that situation, and big classes always stressed me out. The few bigger classes I took at Long Beach City College were the classes I just didn't do as well in. I think they were just like, I just didn't like how it felt for me personally. Um, so I knew that private schools were going to be smaller and more intimate. I also picked my university based on their entrepreneurship program. So I was a business major and um, LMU has a really awesome like entrepreneurship program and it's also very rooted in service. And I had gotten really involved in service opportunities here and um, LMU is a Catholic school and I wasn't necessarily religious, but I just was like, I really like the service element and I really um, liked the business program there. Um, but I think it's knowing yourself and, like I said, visiting the college campus and really thinking about, like, what it is that you want. Um, because sometimes, like, picking a school, like, you don't want to just pick a school because you pick a school. Think about your major and, like, what their programs look like in doing that research ahead of time. Okay, like I said, I came over here thinking I'm on my way to Cal State Fullerton. But um, when it came to applications, I applied to four different CSUs around the area, Fullerton, Long Beach, LA, and Dominguez Hills. And it all came down to LA or Long Beach. And I was actually one of you just last semester. And I've been a business major ever since I started here. And I started talking to um, the professionals that came in in the business. And what I learned was, it. You need to have a goal of what you want to get from after you graduate. So if I had just gone to Cal State Long Beach, it would have been convenient for now, but for later, did I really get what I wanted to get? So what I wanted from transferring is to be able to grow more and to just expand my network and 
just to have a different environment because I feel like if I had gone to Cal State Long Beach from coming to Long Beach State College and living in Long Beach I feel like I'm still going to be meeting the same people from Long Beach and I just wanted to expand my network and from LA I meet different people that live from different places and I love it there and the second thing is that I really like the quarter system because just thinking about it in a semester system if I take six classes per semester that's actually a lot of classes but in a quarter system, I can take four classes per quarter, and that's times three. That's 12 classes, as opposed to um, taking six classes, which is probably going to be much harder. So they tell you that the coursework is going to be like really hard, and the uh, and it's going to go really fast, but in reality, it just depends on you. Like, if you set yourself to the goal that I'm going to ace this class or I'm going to pass this class, you can do it whether in 10 weeks or 16 weeks, you're going to get it done anyway. Thank you. So, um, for me, I decided to go to UCI based on um, all my financial situation. If, um, but I was end up deciding between UCLA and UCI because um, for UCLA, I have to move in and dorm in. So financially speaking, um, I have to take loans and I would have to spend at least two years at UCLA. Um, for UCI, I can commute from Long Beach. I still live in Long Beach. Um, also, um, I do not have to take loans and I can finish in one year. So that is a lot of difference speaking financially. Um, also, I picked UCI because um, they have a good program uh, for my, bi my major as a bio sci major. Um, also, I'm trying to go to medical school afterwards, and they also have a lot of network and club organization program um, to help me. And I think the third thing uh, would be the exposure to um, other professionals and I'm really looking forward to build a really strong relationship with um, my instructors, like doing research um, or anything else that I can think of later on. So, yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> to answer your question, I think ultimately it, it's just a, um, a personal choice. You gotta, you know, check your options. Uh, for example, uh, if you go to a prestigious school, when I started here, I wanted to go to UCLA, USC, but then I, I thought of, of of, um, of the outcome, you know. I thought, you, do I really want to graduate with, uh, with this large amount of debt, you know, if I do qualify for financial aid or if I didn't. Uh, so I, I thought of those options. I recently just graduated uh, August. I got my diploma and I'm like debt free and it's, it's probably the best feeling uh, to graduate and not owe one single dime besides probably the car I got. But other than that, uh, it, it's a great feeling. So. I think it's just personal. Think of that outcome. And if you're married, uh, do you really want to go far away and leave your husband behind or your kids behind? Um, but I mean, you do want to follow your dreams too. So I'm, just consider those options. Uh, my plan A was Santa Cruz, uh, but I get involved uh, in a local church right here in, um, in Long Beach. So I'm part of the youth leadership. So I know spiritually speaking, it was going to affect me. So because of that, I stayed in Long Beach. Um, so like I said, it's just, it's just a personal choice. You know, consider your options and then Hopefully you'll get into that school you want. All right, thank you. Thank you. Touch on, on what they've said as well is that um, it's whatever school is best for you and for all of you. Um, if, if you're looking for a big name, then that could be something you're looking at, you're look at or if you want the small feel for a classroom. Or, um, for me, it, it was easy because I, I, I can still recall getting the letter or the email saying that I got into UCLA and I, I remember crying, <laughs> and that didn't happen with any other school. And that's for me, that was that was big. Um, it, was, it was it was a dream of mine, and and, and, I'm, and I'm lucky enough to be able to live it. So, thank you, panelists, and thank you. Uh, so a lot of the uh, some things to touch upon, upon that the panelists mentioned were definitely cost, but also how you're going to support those costs through uh, scholarships, financial aid your own contribution. Uh, some of them mentioned research, uh, research programs, uh, some of them geography, where it was located. And I think all of them stressed upon what type of experience you want at the university. You know, you're gonna be, this is your one uh, shot before, let's say, uh, your master's program or working full-time or a doctoral program that you'll have this undergraduate experience. And what, really, what type of experience do you want? 
Also, some folks mentioned uh, cost uh, in terms of options of applying. Remember that for the Cal States and the UCs and even the private schools, there are fee waivers available for the application. For the Cal States and the UCs, typically if you get one, you'll get the next three for free. So open up your options. The only cost that opens up is any cost for additional transcripts that you have to purchase. And uh, as one of our panel said, uh, those two words are excellent words, uh, debt-free. So uh, think about uh, how much your tuition is going to cost and what it's worth to you. Thank you, panelists. Um, and thank you to our audience member for asking that great question. Now I'm going to split it, this one up into the first three panelists with one question and the next three with a follow-up question. And for the first three panelists, starting on my side, um, Tell us if you are commuting to your university or living on campus. So tell us about your living situation while going to school for my first three panelists on my side here. Um, I, live at, I live on campus and I, I, have, I am very thankful that I do every day because it's very convenient. Um, everything's on campus, the food, the, you know, I, I, have to, I, I just walk down and I'm, I'm, I'm on campus, so. <laughs> Well, for me, I go to Cal State. Well, I graduated from Cal State Long Beach, so I, I stayed on. I stay home. I live like 15 minutes away. So, I mean, that was a blessing. Now, uh, an advice: take lunch because you don't want to overspend money on food. <laughs> I used to laugh at my friend the first semester. I remember I saw her at the food court, and she had a, a lunch box, a uh, Batman lunch box, and I started laughing. And she told me, you won't be laughing at the end of the semester, and I kind of knew why. <laughs> so, make sure you pack your lunch, save some money. Great tip. So um, I commute to UCI. Um, traffic in the morning is very bad. Um, it's like an hour to get there from where I live. And, but coming back was pretty easy because I try to leave around 7.30 or 8. So um, I use that time wisely by getting my work done, homework assignment, reading um, textbook, whatever I need to do. And um, also it's efficient for me because I still work at the touring center at LBCC. Um, and... Oh, I save a lot of money um, driving instead of living on campus. So that's efficient for me. Thank you for, to my first three panelists. So we covered the commuters, non-commuters, uh, folks living on campus, all different options you're going to be hit with once you choose your university, especially if they're a little bit further or not so far. For my uh, next three panelists, I want to talk a, a little bit about motivation. So I'm not going to talk about your motivation that uh, inspired you to transfer because a lot of you have already covered that. But for my last three panelists at the far end, what is your motivation to get right now to get your bachelor's degree and get up on that podium? Well, personally, my number one motivation is my family because they've always the one that's always been there for me. And it's just, you know, your motivation is actually does depend on you. It, could, it doesn't have to be your family. It could be your friend. and It could be yourself as well. And actually, that's one of the most important ones is yourself. Because, I mean, you, your family might not be supportive, but do it for yourself. Because at the end of the day, like everything you do, the only person that's going to be affected by that is you. Thank you. So I'm kind of old. I graduated in 2011. Um, so I've been out of school for a while, but my motivation in school um, was really that I was a first generation college student. So I just like wanted to make my family really proud of me. Um, and keeping that like in my mind the entire time I was there was like, I'm the first one, I'm the first one, and I just want to finish this like for myself and for my family and to say that I did it. Um, and so that's how I kept myself motivated. Thank you. Um, I was a first generation student as well, so for me it was also my family, uh, making them proud, um, kind of leading the way for my, my siblings. I have a sister and two brothers, so kind of, um, it was hard being the first one, but it's nice knowing that now they have like a, a, an example to, to follow. And also myself, I just want to make myself proud, um, better myself as much as I can, because like um, Katie said, um, um, in the end, it's you that gets affected by the choices that you make. Actually, we still have a couple minutes. Can you, the first three panelists talk about your motivation to graduate with your bachelor's degree? No 
one's fighting for this mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I guess my motivation is just, um, I think most people touched on it, but I, I, I want to experience what it's like to walk that podium and get my bachelor's. I, I, I think about it sometimes, and, and it's crazy to think that no one's done it in my family, and I want to make sure that I stop that cycle and, and that I start a new cycle of people who do continue that. Thank you. I, I love what Marco said uh, with the whole cycle. Um, in my family, no one has graduated. It's expected for us to have kids at age 18. Uh, I mean, when, and the few times I, I speak to my family and my relatives in Mexico, they're like, dude, you're 26. You should have a family and five kids by now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I decided to break that cycle as well when I started uh, coming to college. I, I, every now and then when I speak to them, I do tell them, I'm like, you know what, my mentality is different. Um, although I did want a, a child at age 18. Um, now I don't want any kids until after 30. But I remember uh, 2008, economy as you guys know if you guys remember economy wasn't the best but I did remember looking at my father's struggle uh, he had a, a business selling cars and he fell into a huge depression he didn't even want to come out of his room so I promised to myself I think it was my freshman year here that I, I, I would complete my college degree because I didn't want to struggle like he did and and having a degree doesn't mean you're gonna be rich it just means that you're gonna have more alternatives and more options and more doors will open up so that was my motivation. Thank you. Um, my motivation would be my future. I always uh, envision my, uh, my future while I'm, I was taking biology, chemistry, and calculus at the same time. It was so hard. I have to sit down and study like every day and have probably at least the most five hours of sleep almost every night, even the weekend. And I have to volunteer, I have to work, blah, blah, blah. So I, my future is, my motivation. I wanted to be a doctor so bad and accomplish that and seeing that in the future really just, okay, not, not, not sleeping, not eating, that's fine. I just need to get there. So, <laughs> but, oh, okay, you still have to sleep and eat, but, you know. <laughs> Thank you, panelists. And, and from what you've heard, I, I think you could pick up on, um, and hopefully this will help you get through as you try to transfer, uh, maybe this year, maybe next year, is your motivation. And your classmates up here have shown that they're, they're thinking ahead. They're not just thinking of uh, just that podium, but what happens after that podium uh, at the university. Uh, also, uh, a panelist mentioned that they're old because they uh, graduated in 2011, graduated in 1989, you're not old. So, <laughs> uh, finally, um, uh, I think it goes back to and someone made a great point in our panel of, do you want to be the first up there? And you don't want to be the last up there either. Uh, think about that for yourselves in terms of your education and where you really want to go. Um, many of you, uh, some of you will be uh, on uh, getting your AA, AS degrees, associate degrees for transfer in the spring and be up at one podium. Some of you will be at my transfer reception in June and be up at the podium. Um, and then after that, it will be the university and beyond. So it's not just the podium, but what happens after that. Uh, please join me in thanking our great panelists today. And, and, and once again, uh, for the audience, if you are thinking of transferring, please stand. If you are, are goals to transfer anywhere, uh, please stand right now. Awesome. So really, I wanted to have you stand because uh, these are our next panelists and these are our next transfers uh, from Long Beach City College. Thank you again, everybody.